Let's look at another example of a calculation that's quite useful we can make with analyses of musculoskeletal geometry. And it's analysis of the muscle tendon velocity during sprinting. So my, why might we want to study muscle tendon velocities in sprinting, and particularly of the, the hamstring muscles that I'm showing here? Hamstring muscles are very frequently in, injured in many different sports, and it's a pretty devastating injury. Once it happens, it, it tends to recur. People miss whole seasons for hamstring injuries. These injuries occur primarily when the muscle is stretching under eccentric contraction, and it's stretching at a high velocity with high force. So what if we wanted to know how fast the hamstrings are stretching during sprinting? We can do this with analysis of musculoskeletal geometry. The setup is pretty straightforward. I'm showing it here. I'll work through it on the board here. So here's the pelvis, here's the thigh, here's the shank, and I'm defining the hamstrings here as a single muscle. The hamstrings are in fact a group of muscles, but let's take one that's frequently injured, the biceps femoris long head. It attaches here on the pelvis and down here on the tibia, and it uh, crosses behind the knee as you can see and behind the hip, so it generates a hip extension moment and a knee flexion moment. Now we know that the moment arm for each degree of freedom is going to be the change in length of this muscle tendon complex with the change in orientation of that degree of freedom. So moment arm is dl d theta. Now the tricky thing for the hamstrings is that it crosses two joints. So even in a planar situation here, its length is going to be dependent on the hip flexion angle and the knee flexion angle. In 3D, it's a little more complicated because the hip not only flexes and extends, but it adducts and rotates as well. So the length and velocity of the muscle is dependent on all those degrees of freedom. But in this application, we'll just focus on the, the planar example. Now, we said we have length and its relationship to change in joint angle, but we want to know something about the velocity of the hamstrings in sprinting. So let's say we measure the change in angles during sprinting. We do a motion capture experiment and we know what the joint angles are and we measure the, the angles and angular velocities. We'll call that d theta dt and we'll multiply both sides of this equation by that. Okay, so we've just taken our equation for the moment arm. We've added joint angular velocities and we have to add a little i here because it could be the hip, it could be the knee. And there's something interesting to note. This d theta di uh, shows up in both these locations. So now we have dl dt. Oh my gosh, that's the velocity. Change in length with respect to time of the hamstring muscle, dl dt, is going to be equal to the moment arm of that muscle times the angular velocity. So this is something we can measure with a musculoskeletal model. This is something we can measure in a motion capture experiment. So we could calculate this velocity of the muscle tendon complex. So the velocity of the muscle tendon complex is equal to the, the moment arm for each degree of freedom times the angular velocity of that degree of freedom. We have the little subscript i because the total velocity is going to be equal to a sum here. The sum of the moment arms times the joint angular velocities. So it'll be the sum of the moment arm times the joint angular velocity at the knee plus the moment arm product, the moment arm and um, joint angular velocity at the hip. So Pretty tricky, but good news, we can use musculoskeletal geometry to find the hamstring velocity. Let me just walk through those equations here quickly. So same equation here. This is our moment arm equation. We multiplied each side by the joint angular velocity. 
that lets us cross out these um, d theta terms and get that the velocity of the muscle tendon complex with respect to each joint angle is the moment arm for that joint angle times the angular velocity of that joint angle. And so that the total muscle tendon velocity is the sum of these products of the moment arms times joint angular velocity. And we sum that over from one to the number of joints this muscle crosses. So that's another great example of how you can use musculoskeletal geometry to find out something very practical, hamstring velocities during sprinting. So that is a nifty example on hamstrings. What we've talked about is uh, musculoskeletal in general and some specific applications. What we'll move on now is estimates of muscle strength. What, is the, what are the maximum moments that we can generate about a joint? And then modeling of musculoskeletal geometry. See you there.